Hello there, my name is Tracy Alsom and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator based in Canada. Welcome to my Papercraft With Me YouTube channel. Today I want to show you how I created this bookmark. I'm not going to create the bookmark itself. I'm going to use this same technique and the same colours and products, but this time I'm going to make a card. But I wanted to show you how I got this layering effect. It's a single layer there. The sentiment is a punch piece that I put over the top because I managed to get a really nasty mark down it so that was my little hiding place um, but I'm going to create a card using that same technique and I thought I would show you how I did that on camera so you could follow along. The product that I'm using is this stamp set from Stampin' Up! It's called Beautiful Bouquet. It does come as a bundle, if you wish, with some framelits which will actually coordinate with it, but I'm just going to use the stamp set today. It's a really nice stamp set. The images are in fact only at 60% shown on the front. Um, I stick them all inside so I can see exactly what I've got and you can see it's a big stamp set. There's a lot of sentiments and there's a lot of pieces. So for my purposes today I want that flower, I need that little bud, I need that leaf and I need that little centerpiece for the flower. I might also need this tiny little straight piece as a stalk. I'm not totally sure, but we'll we'll take it out just in case. So there we are. So those are the pieces that I'm going to need. And what I want to do is before I start is to create some masks. I've actually started that there. Um, and to do that, I have full adhesive post-it notes. These are the three by three size. Uh, there's also a smaller two by two size and basically you get selection of different colors in there. There's a hundred post-it notes in there and they're slightly different from normal post-it notes. Normal post-it notes you'll have a little strip of adhesive at the top and the rest of the post-it note is um, non-adhesive. With this one it's the opposite. There's a little strip at the bottom that is not sticky but the bulk of it from there to there is sticky. Um, so that's what I've been using to create my mask. And it's a really simple process. I'll just grab some old olive ink. I'll make up a few more leaves. So all I'm going to do is stamp my leaf down on the post-it notes. I have three stacked up together save time when you're cutting and I'm just going to cut it out nice and easy these leaves the flowers as well they're not difficult to cut so there we are three leaf masks already all I've got to do now is separate them up and I'm going to stick them on there just so that I've got them to hand when I need them There we go. So and that's exactly how I did all the others and it's those in, those stamps that I chose and they're all there ready. So I have a piece of Whisper White card here and I'm going to start with the image that I want to be in the front. So this one is a full flower this one here is a full flare and this one sort of tucks behind it. So the idea when you're doing masking like this is you start from the front. Lead from the front is how I always remember it. And it makes it a lot easier to actually create what you want to do. Now I'm also going to bring in some sponge daubers to get this nice effect on the flowers themselves I'm going to use the sponge daubers to help me so I will start with the melon mambo I believe so I have my melon mambo sponge dauber this is blushing bride and this is melon mambo so I'm going to start by inking up the stamp with blushing bride ink and then just tapping around the edges of that stamp 
with Melamamba. If I put it down, you can probably see there's a bit of a darker pink around the edges that the sponge dauber has put on. And let's just stamp it down there. And there's one. Clean it off. Do the same thing again. Tap it onto the Blushing Bride ink pad and then add some extra colour around the outside with the sponge dauber and we'll do that a third time and because you're adding this ink with the sponge dauber everyone is going to be very slightly different you'll add a little bit more on one petal than another there we go so there's my three flowers. Now what I need to do is to take some of these little post-it note masks that I've created and I need to place them over the flowers that I have just stamped. Oops. Like that. Okay, so now I can clean off my stamp, do the same thing again. And this time I'm going to stamp and slightly overlap my flower over the mask. Let's clean that off, do that again. So that's those bits done. Now I'm going to use some more masks to cover those flowers. Every time you stamp, if you cover up what you've just stamped, the next piece that you put on and that you lay over will appear to come from behind. So, so there's those. Now let's get some nice bright pink buds. So this is just Melon Mambo ink and I'm just going to stamp a few of these buds. Just slightly overlapping the masks again. Like that have some little masks for those now you can do this process with less masks you could just have one or two stamp an area mask them off stamp over the top and then move the mask to a different area but I have to say that I tend to find that I forget that I haven't masked something and then I end up over stamping and it drives me nuts. So personally, I prefer to cover as many as I can and then stamp from there. So now we'll take away those two ink colours and I'm going to bring some old olive. I have some scrap paper here and I'm going to stamp onto the old olive and then I'm going to stamp off and then I'm going to stamp my leaf I'm doing this I've got my leaves are lighter than they would otherwise be now because I don't have enough mass I've got to be very careful around there make sure I don't stamp on something that I didn't mean to now one of the things that I have found it can be a bit a bit of a challenge is 
seeing the whole arrangement because you're not actually seeing the flowers underneath you're seeing these masks and it can it can uh, sometimes get a little bit confusing now what i've done is i've got my initial leaves stamped now i'm going to cover those up with some masks that i've cut So now I'll use the same old olive ink, but I'm not going to stamp off this time. I'm going to stamp at full strength. So this is now going to show up as a darker green. finger in the ink pad which is not a good thing okay so that's that now I need to just cover up these other little buds there so I'm going to steal a mask from there I could just stop and create some more masks but I won't make you sit and watch me do that so we'll move a few You can always tell where you've got them just by running your finger over the top. As you can see I've made some splotches there and that's me getting ink on my fingers but you can get the general idea so we'll pull off these masks now So you've got layers and layers of different masks so you, you'll find you pull off one layer and then go back and pull off the other one like here for instance there we go and gradually as you're pulling off these masks you're revealing the design that you've created underneath as i say it can be a little bit of a challenge sometimes to see exactly what you're doing because your brain just doesn't see the the underneath it just sees the odd shapes that you've created using these masks okay so that's all of those and the last flower there we go so if we ignore the splotchy marks i will resolve those later but they still don't look quite like flowers. So the last thing to do is to bring my Memento Black ink. And I have this lovely little 
stamen image and the trick is with this one is to put the bottom part in the centre of the flower like that. Now this flower I've kind of slightly overlapped the centre there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I don't accidentally stamp on top of the other flower so I'm going to mask that off now when I stamp my stamens in here some of them will go onto the mask and then when I remove the mask those stamens appear to be going behind that petal so that's really how, how you do it um, what I will do I will put a sentiment down here I'll choose a sentiment put that down there uh, let's close up these other ink pads so I don't do any more damage now let's choose a sentiment let's go for the same one that we had on the original bookmark and this is pretty much what I did here I managed to get a nice a nice splodge on it so I'm going to use that one I'll grab a block and a piece of whisper white card in fact I'll, let's have a look inside my little box of goodies and see if I've got one already punched a piece of whisper white that's already punched and that will fit quite nicely there so I'm going to black ink going to do with that splodge at the top I'm going to add a couple of extra leaves I think so let's bring in some of my other masks bud and another little leaf okay peel off those masks there we go. And I think it looks a little bit lopsided with all those leaves so let's put one more flower bud just at the top there just like that so the buds are coming out from behind these okay so let's start putting this card together I have a piece of thick whisper white card it's cut to eight and a half by five and a half scored at four and a quarter and then I have a piece of blushing bride card and this is four 
by five and a quarter. Had to think then. All right, so I'll put this this piece. onto the blushing bride. Like that. With multi-purpose liquid glue, I'm going to use the same glue, I think, to put that onto the card. So that's now on the card front. And then with some stamp and dimensionals, I'll put this over that nasty splodge. There we go. So there's the card. And what I will do to finish off is I will stamp another piece for the inside just with a couple of the flowers and I'll do the same on the front of the envelope. And if you go to my blog, I'll put the link in the description below, you'll be able to see the finished card with the finished envelope as well. So I hope that was useful and especially how I dealt with my unfortunate inky fingers. Um, and if there's anything that you didn't understand, just drop me a note and I will try and answer the questions for you. Uh, in the meantime, if you'd like more paper crafting inspiration, you can go, always go to my website, tracyalsom.stampinup.net, and I will certainly help be able to help you there. And you can also access my online store from there and you can buy all the Stampin' Up! products that I've used today and have them delivered anywhere in Canada. So that's it for me for today and I will speak to you again soon. Bye.